Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That's why I love him so, because he is real to me. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That's why I love him so, because he is real to me. I woke up early one morning. My pillow was wet with tears. I called on Christ my Savior. He always is. He carried my heavy burden, dried up all my tears. That's why I love him so. That's why I love him so. That's why I love him so, because he is real to me.
Ambassador Josephine Dickinson with the Ambassador for Christ Heritage International Church online in cyberspace coming to you wherever you are. Jesus is knocking at your door. It's not his will that you be in discomfort. He is the comforter. He is our good shepherd. He gives us life and he sustains the life. And if you're going through anything in your life wherein you are discomfort, Jesus is your answer today. He is standing right there waiting for you to say, to call his name and invite him in. See, he don't barge into your life. He respects your choice. He sent me into your space to tell you that he has your answer. He wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to get your house in order. He wants to save your children, your family, your husband, your wife, your neighbors, your relatives. He wants you to have peace like a river. He wants you to have love overflowing like an ocean. He wants you to have joy overflowing. He wants you to be fully supplied with all you need. All your needs supplied. And you delight yourself in him. The scripture says he will give you the desires of your heart. He sent me into your space today to tell you this. And if you would just reach out, reach out, reach up 
and touch the Lord. He will sit down and explain to you the terms of his supply. He did it for me. He's doing it for me. I'm a witness that God is a good God. This is the Attend to My Word online crusade. This is where we come around the Word of God and read. Look up words. Get an understanding. Meditate. So that the Holy Spirit can revelate into our lives. Because grace is multiplied in our lives as we come to know him. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come unto me. All you who labor and are heavy laden and he says, and I will give you rest. You don't have to be stressed out. You don't have to roll a blunt just to mellow out. You don't have to. You really don't. I come to tell you. You don't have to get that shot. Just to simmer down. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. He is our comforter. And if you just call his name, Jesus. He's that sweet spirit that will settle over you and give you sweet sleep at night without any external aids. So this is... The attend to my word. We come to attend to the word of God because Proverbs say that if you would attend to the word of God, the word of God is medicine to all of our flesh. And it's uh, October now, and we are working in the book of Second Peter, the first chapter. So, but before we go into the chapter, let me tell you a little something about Peter. I want you to get your Bible because it's not my intention to go fast. It's my intention to go real slow because time is winding up. Things in this world are not getting any better. But the light is real bright and beautiful for the people of God. Jesus is the light and he's shining brighter and brighter in and through his people. So we want to go really slow and low. So get your Bible, your paper, and your pencil, or your pen, or however you write down and take down your notes. We're going to be working out of 2 Peter, the first chapter. But before we read that first verse, I want to talk, tell you a little something about the author. The author of... The second book of Peter is Peter himself. Peter was a fisherman that lived in Galilee. Back around five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to about six to eight. A.D. He had a fishing company. Jesus lived in Galilee also. 
And Jesus chose Peter to be one of his disciples. They probably knew one another. Uh, Jesus might have had built him some furniture for his home. He probably brought Mother Mary's uh, a fish, a mess of fish every Friday for the family. You know how we do to keep everything going. They all lived in the community. But Peter was chosen by Jesus to be one of his disciples. Now Peter's name by birth was Simon. That's the name that his parents gave him. But Jesus named Simon Peter in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew when Jesus was, they was all sitting around the fire as it were, and Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And some said that he was Jeremiah, some said he was the prophet, some said that he was John the Baptist and come back from the dead. But then Jesus said, who do you say that I am? You know, that's what's important. And that's what Jesus is always reaching for. Who do you say? See, I, I know him as a healer. I know him as a provider. I know him as a savior. I know him as a comforter. I know him as my best friend. I know him as one that's real. He never leave me. So I know him as the Christ. The son of the living God. So that's what Peter said. He just jumped out. He said, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And that was the right answer. And Jesus said, Peter. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock of revelation as it were. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven, hath given you the correct answer. So Jesus named this man, and they called him Peter from then on. And sometimes they called him Simon Peter. So Simon Peter was one of Jesus' lead disciples. He was very impulsive. He was very loud. <laughs> he spoke his mind whether it was right, wrong, or indifferent. He didn't have he didn't have any problem making up his mind. If he wanted he if he decided he's gonna cut somebody's ear off or he he was really trying to cut the man's head off but his ear. He just did it. He was very impulsive. But that's all right. Jesus can use impulsive people. <laughs> he gave Peter. Peter was the one that got the keys to the kingdom. And said, whatever you bind on earth, you know, that's, that's to all of us. It's bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So Peter was Jesus' disciple. Followed Followed him. He messed up, but he had a repentant heart. He was very correctable. He was a humble man. So he wrote the second book of Peter. He's getting ready to be crucified. He was crucified upside down like Jesus told him he would be. And so he's getting very stern with the believers and he's letting them know that, yes, Jesus is coming back soon, but we have to be ready for his coming. And he said, before Jesus comes, however, there's going to be false Christ and false doctrines, false teachers, false prophets that's going to come and try to sway you from the faith. But he encourages us to grow in grace. And that's what I come here for in your space at this time. To assist you 
in growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. So that's why we stop, slow down, talk low, talk slow, get your Bible, put your eyes on the word of God. Because it's coming a time, I don't know when, but it's coming a time we're not going to have Bibles to read. They de figuring out ways now to take the Bible and do what they want to do. But we pray, we believe in God for a little more time so that we can get that word of God hid in our heart. So that we don't sin against the Lord. We'll know what the words say. What the word mean. And how to apply the word of God to our life. Peter, the second book of Peter was written about 68 AD, just before, just after Nero passed, after Nero died. Well, before, just before Nero died, they killed Peter. So after they killed Peter, then Nero passed on. I was preparing this message for a TV edit. And I thought I had my clock on. And I, I'm used to just getting on Facebook and going on. But I'm going to stop it now and start it again. Or either I may start later. But I still we, we still got the victory. I thought my clock was going, but it wasn't. And to God be the glory. I'm going to sing a song and just get on off here and I'm going to start all over again. And it's still all right. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, He gives me the victory. So many people doubt Him. I can't live without Him. That's why I love Him so, because He For, in case somebody was listening or somebody will listen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We commit all of this into your hand. You're going to use this in Jesus' name, Lord. We praise you. We commit this service into your hands. Although we lost track of the time, but Time is in your hand, and we give you glory, and we give you praise. We ask you to let your blood cover. We plead the blood of Jesus over our life. We plead the blood of Jesus over the life of our children, our grandchildren, our unborn generation. We plead the blood of Jesus over our family. We plead the blood of Jesus over our cousins, our nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles. We plead the blood of Jesus over our neighbors, our friends. We pray for our enemies. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those.
who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm.